I have built this amazing base. However, when I leave the base through this portal, this is what we are greeted with. So I came up with my absolute favorite build I have ever made so far that practically spans the entire height of the nether to match the same scale as the base. So grab some snacks, stay hydrated and enjoy the next 200 days. Okay, last episode, I built this new base, which I am super happy with. A lot of you guys seem to like the base as well. Anyways, there are still a few small fixes I'd like to make, starting with this one. This brewing setup has a small issue where it doesn't take out the correct potions, so I redesigned the whole thing to fix that. Next up is the slime launcher. Sometimes it's a bit hard to stand perfectly in the center, so I added pistons on the side to help align myself. Then I added an auto chunk loading system for the storage. This starts as soon as I start sorting items and automatically turns off when it's done sorting all the items. This helps prevent issues when unloading these chunks while it's sorting. And the last fix is for this chunk loader. It's keeping the nether switch loaded, however upon logging into the world it doesn't always start automatically. Now that is fixed using a redstone clock in the spawn chunks. Alright then, time to start with the nether hub. Well, it's not really a traditional nether hub, which acts as a center that connects all my portals across the world using, for example, tunnels. It's just a decoration for this portal. So what is the actual build going to be? I was super fascinated by this tree by Fwip that he built in his hardcore world. But don't worry, it's not going to be the same as that one. All I did was to split my tree in half as well, and that's where the nether portal is going to be. As for the rest, it is a giant fantasy tree that reaches all the way from the lava beneath the nether to the build limit. And for that build, we need a lot of resources. Yeah, I think that's even more blocks than what I needed for the base itself. And what do we do when we need resources? That's right, it's time for a montage. Alright, now I have all the blocks we need to build this new portal. This whole process took about forever, but that wasn't gonna stop me. I now have a blaze farm as well, which I needed to craft all the end rods. Also a quick side note, in case you are wondering where my 20 god apples went that I acquired in episode 1 when I looted all the ancient cities, I lost them. I must have accidentally dropped them when I was clearing out junk in my inventory and that's when they must have despawned. At least that's my theory. Anyways, let's move on with the video. So what's the next step? Well, first we need to make some space to be able to build this and that involves a lot of bedrock breaking. So can we use a machine to automate this process? Yes and no. We can get a lot of it done with a machine, but since the hole in the bedrock is not rectangular but a custom shape, there's a lot of manual bedrock breaking to be done as well. The easiest way to do so is to make use of redstone lag. This allows allows me to temporarily freeze the world so that I have enough time to update a budded piston, break it and replace it with a downwards facing piston. When the world unfreezes, it tries to do all of that in a single game tick, causing the bedrock to magically disappear. At least that's how I understood it. Anyways, let's get started. This was quite a lengthy process, but also quite a bit relaxing to be honest. I was just watching YouTube or a movie on the side while breaking the bedrock. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, I also need to remove some blocks underneath before I can build the nether hub. So here's another short time lapse. Very well then, everything's now fully dug out. I already moved all the resources over here as well and I removed the frog light farm as it wouldn't work anymore anyways. More on that later. Everything is ready and now we can get to building this absolute giant of a tree. Yeah, there's really not much more to say. So let's cue one of my absolute favorite time lapses.
And here we go. This proved to be the hardest challenge so far. Even though I spent almost twice as much time on the armor trim display, building this tree wore me down much more than anything I've faced before. However, the end result is more than worth it. Before I showcase it to you in detail, let's start with a tradition I introduced last episode. Remember these? If not, then I recommend checking out the previous video. Anyways, first I want to note these three ideas down. I have the perfect projects in mind for these. Spoiler alert, this will be the new froglet farm as I removed my current one earlier in this episode. These two ideas will sort of be combined into one for decoration around my base. But yeah, it will be quite a while until I get to these projects. Then I updated this book since last episode where I keep track of every episode with a few stats. So let's add a new page. And at last, the comment of the video. This one is by Poots. Thank you so much for your comment. I do have a lot of builds planned for the upcoming videos and I can't wait to get started with all of them. Now I could have chosen between a lot of comments, but honestly, thank you so much to everyone who left a comment. I really appreciate it a lot. Well then, back to the nether hub. Let me just say, when I designed this build in creative first, I pushed my building abilities to the max. I am by no means a builder, but I always strive to become better at that. I am super proud of this project, and I think this is genuinely my best build in all of my years in this game. So, let me present to you the Tree of Veneration. Let me know what you think of the name down in the comment section below. If you have a better name for it, feel free to suggest a different name. I had to learn a lot about building trees in Minecraft before I could even attempt to make this project come to life. Now, I posted about this build a while back on Reddit already and a lot of people enjoyed it, so I hope you guys love it as well. Alright then, in the center I can fly up and down to travel from the nether roof down into the actual nether. In this crystal is my portal to the new base. There are also the two portals for chunk loading the storage system slightly hidden away. And yeah, the rest of it is all decoration. The canopy took forever to build, even with Lightmatica, which lets me place blocks in mid-air. The total build time is nearing a full day, but at last it is fully built. Anyways, that's it for this episode. The next video will be a world tour of these past 1500 days. I realize that you guys might not have the same understanding of this world as I do. So I know this world inside and out, but you guys might not. Also, I edit the videos to be very fast paced and with a world tour I can slow down a bit and show everything in more detail. So stay tuned for that one. I hope you enjoyed the video as always always and I will see you in the next episode.